Okay, so I'm here to talk with you about how we write the Rails framework for de decades inside Shopify. And to those that don't know me, my name is Rafael França. I I am in the GitHub with the Rafael Franca handler and Twitter the same handler. I'm a member of the Rails Core team since 2011, I think, 12, maybe. And I work at Shopify. Shopify is a big e-commerce platform that's, uh, that is used by thousands of commerce in the world. And I also know as the Rails maintainer because I usually the people that, the person that does most of the boring stuff like bumpy gens and fix bugs and things like that. And why we are here to look at the Shopify application specifically? Because Shopify application started around the same time of the Rails framework started. It was in 2004, way before the first stable version of the Rails framework that was in 2005. So Shopify started in, in December of 24. And, and after that, we were using Rails since then. So the Shopify application also was never rewritten. So the same code base that started in 2004 is still there. You can still find the first commit in Shopify history in the Git repository. And you can see in this timeline that all the versions of Rails that we run it in production. So we were always closer to the Rails versions, like in 2010, we are in the version 3.0 was released of Rails, and we already were in the 3.01 in Shopify. And you can see that we had a little of problem in 3.2.2 in Shopify, so it was the biggest Rails upgrade ever that Rails core team made because there were a lot of big changes. And I'm going to talk about how this is not happening anymore in any company, not just Shopify, but why the Rails team take those upgrades so serious and how we try to not let this happen ever again in your application. So, Shopify right now is in the latest Rails application. It's running the Rails 4.2 version in production since August of 2015. And the Rails 4.2 was released in December of 2040. So we are really close to that version. And we are in the process of upgrading to the Rails 5. So this is what I'm going to talk about you today. So to upgrade to any version of Rails, you have to run your application in the new version, like you have to fix your test, you have to get your application running in the new version. One way to do that is create long-living branches, like you create a branch and you run your application with the new version of Rails and see what's broken, fix what's broken, and the problem with this approach is when you have a code base of the size of Shopify code base that they have hundreds of developers working in the same code base every day, and you create a long living branch, you have a lot of problems with keeping it up to date and trying to solve conflicts, and also people may introduce bugs while you are fixing those bugs. So it's really hard to do a Rails upgrading doing a long living branch like that. So in Shopify, we use a different approach. We use dual booting of the application. So for us, dual booting was the best solution because it's allow us to share the same code base with more than one version of the framework in development, test, and even production. And one way to do that is using this environment variable called bundle gen file. 
It's really simple to use. You only point the variable to the name of gen file that you want to run. Like you can install all the genes using the gen file specifically for the Rails five and the gen file specifically for the Rails two four two version. But the problem with this approach is Uh, since people could upgrade one gen, one gen file and forget to upgrade in another gen file, you may have versions mismatch between both things, and this may break your application because you would have a lot of dependencies with different code that will not work in production. So to fix this problem, we made a hack to share the same gene file. It's a really nice rack. It's a monkey patch inside the bundle. And you can see the code right here. Yeah, I'm not going to explain this code, but what it does is actually help some class of bundle to define a way to share the same gene file and generate two different gene file locks. And what this hack helps is now it's possible to do things like that. You can, in your gen file, say, if the Rails version will be the next, I include the gens. If not, I include this other set of gens. It's make possible for us to use the same environment variable approach, but it addresses the issues where people is keeping different versions of genes in each gen files. And of course, the downside of this approach is having to monkey patch bundle it. <laughs> but I'm doing some lobby to get this merged in the bundle itself. Yeah. So after you can get your application running with both versions, it's important to you to have a good CI environment to test this code with both versions. In Shopify, we, we use BuildKite. And in our, all the pull requests run both the code with the Rails 4.2 version and the Rails 5 version. You can see that in the Rails 5 build, it's broken. But the Rails 4.2 build is green. This helps because once we have the build green for both versions, if people add new code that breaks a new Rails version, we can see right away in fixing the pull request itself instead of uh, deploying to production broken code. So another thing that we try to do in Shopify to make this kind of upgrade easy uh, is keeping the dependence up to date. So this is important because when you have your test running the last versions of your dependencies, it's easy to you change your dependency if you need to change it for the new version. And you also make sure that once you upgrade the Rails version, the dependency will not be broken. And doing that, I found a lot of problems in our dependencies. So one thing that I really recommend to you is try to contributed to the dependencies that don't support your Rails version yet. This is, I think, a huge problem we have in our community. The dependencies usually wait Rails to release the final version. And after that, you cannot upgrade your application because your dependencies are not supporting the final version yet. So for me, it's an opportunity to give back to the community. And also, it's an opportunity to understand how your dependencies of your project works. And I, I found this interesting, but yesterday someone made this tweet, saying that I am the person that is in all over the place in the real gens. And the reason for that is exactly because I try to keep our dependencies out working with the newest version. So every time I find a bug in Shopify, I fix in the dependency instead of doing monkey patch. So this is the reason. And this is one of the examples. We were using the action pack XML parser in Shopify. And it was not working with Rail 5, even that it's an official Rail gen. 
So I had to rewrite it entirely to get it to working with both versions. So our biggest challenges inside Shopify in this specific upgrade was some genes and dependencies that we have. One of it was the protected attributes that Nick yesterday told about it. It is the gene responsible to define that attribute accessible method. And you can see that we had to remove all the usage of this inside Shopify because this gene is not going to support it in Rails 5. This project took almost three months and we had more than 150 linked pull requests on these issues. So it was a huge, huge need work that we need to do. And what we did in this migration was to use the strong parameters like Nick told you yesterday. So you move that logic to the controller layer. In Shopify we have, uh, we, uh, we were not, uh, we did not like the strong parameters API and we create a new API called stronger parameters. It's also do type checkers, like you say that the age attribute needs to be an integer and the name attribute needs to be a, a string. So it, that is to avoid some kind of security problems that may happen if you did not check the type of your attributes. And during this project, we also found that we were missing some abstractions. So for instance, we had some complex forms that had a lot of logic and logic to validate parameters, logic to typecast those parameters. So we used uh, dry validation chains to define the schema of the form object. So we create these abstractions inside Shopify. And we also trying to see different approaches like that. So if you are interested, the Tailblazer gen has the form objects, the he form gen that can do that for you. You don't need to implement itself. Another big challenge we had was the controller tests because in Rails 4.2, controller tests were not in actually an int integration kind of test. So when you, you do a, a controller test, it's not passed through the rack middle endpoint, neither it's, it's encode your parameters. So in real life, we try to we change that. So you actually have to. So the control test now actually encode your parameters. So we had a huge problem inside Shopify because our tests were expecting that the parameters are not encoded. So to fix that, we change send the pull request to raise itself to implement a new option inside the controller test to specify which parameter code you, you want to use in each controller test. And another big problem we had was the parameters because since Rails 5, the actual controller parameters do not in, inherit for hash anymore. So a lot of code that was doing uh, is a check is now break, broken. So code like this that check if a parameter is a hash does not work anymore in Rails 5. And this is really hard to track down because if you don't have a good test coverage, you, we actually have, in this case, you would actually had a new as return instead of the thing that your method should do. So what we recommend people to do is to not, never pass parameters to inside the model layer. So you have APIs for that, like, oops. Like you, you can actually call the 2H method inside your parameters and that is going to change the type of your class from parameters to hash. And 
I recommend you to do that before sending it to the model and do things in the model. And those were the, the biggest problem. And to get the Rails 5 in production, we need to run both versions in production machine to catch some, some problems that our test suite did not catch. So one thing we need to do in Shopify is create some compatibility layers, like in the Rails 4.2 migration, we had some change in how Rails satellite sessions and how cross-site request forgery tokens are implemented. So if you run both versions in production, and your user access uh, Rails 4.2 machine, and later the next request, he accepts the Rails 5 machine that would give the user 500 error, and we had to be really careful about that, and we had to mock patch some parts of the framework in our application. But for the Rails 5 upgrade, we were more questions about that, and those compatibility layers are implemented in the framework itself, so you don't need to care about that anymore. At least, if you have any of those problems, please report the bug, because it's a bug, it's not a feature. <laughs> and after we deploy in production, and we have different set of machines running with different versions, we do benchmarks to see if there are any performance regression in the application. We use our set of tools for do that, like we have a Slack bot that can do benchmarks, and we just ask the bot to do benchmarks in production machine and get a strike proof output. So we use that to fix those performance problems. We compare the results of the same thing between servers that are running with the new version and with the old version. And if any regression is found, we reverse the change, we deploy it to the old version, we fix the regression rails itself and deploy again. So we try to do this process over and over again until we have the same set of performance. And the last thing we do in the in those kind of projects, Rails migration projects, we do the cleanup because we end up with a lot of deprecations and feature tools in our code base. Like, we actually have some part of the code that check if we are in the new version or the old version and do different things. And after we are in production, fully in production with the new version, we do all the cleanups and remove all those feature toggles and deprecations. This was our last migration. Every single migration since the Rails 3 migration was done in the same process. Like we tried to boot the application with both versions. We tried to fix the test suite. We tried to test things in production. And after that, we did the cleanup. But like I said before, this kind of project can take a lot of time. Like these migrations take more than nine months. It's more than a baby. <laughs> uh, uh, because of that, we are planning to change this process a little bit. And for the future, we, we are trying to, of course, avoid monkey patches in the Rails code base. This is one of our biggest problems in Shopify. We had a lot of monkey patches in the Rails code base. And we are slowly moving those patches to the framework itself. There are more patches about resilience, about about error handling and about things when running a Rails application in the high, high load environment. And I believe, we believe that those patches are also useful for the, all the community, not just Shopify, because one day you, you are going to have an application like ours, maybe bigger, or if you already don't have it. So we are trying to avoid those much patching, patching rays itself. We are trying to keep our dependency number really small. We always try that and we keep enforcing that you should do that too. 
And one thing that I really recommend is to think about backwards compatibility because it's one of the things that the Rails core team most try to do in the Rails itself. If you think about people that need to upgrade your application from one version to another. So if you have a gen or an open source project that uses Rails, I really recommend you to think about this and make the life of your users easy when they are upgrading. So for the future, we want to keep a parallel CI all the time, not just during the Rails upgrade process. Like right now, we only do that when we start a new upgrade, but we want to keep it always running with two versions of Rails. The reason for that is we really want to keep tracking master in Shopify application, so we want to be always in the master branch, never in a release branch. So that is going to be really hard, but we are going to try that. We believe we will be better for the community as a whole if we have Shopify running in master to find the regression early and things like that. And this is also one thing that I really want to change is right now we have a dedicated team to do that, but for me this is everyone's concern. So everyone in the company, every single developer should be aware of the chains of Rails and how they code is coped with the framework, try to decouple for the framework and try to, to fix Future problems early instead of waiting six months to have to fix those problems. And that's it. Thank you. We are hiring, so if you want to work with us, you can enter this web page. And thank you.